my name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We have a wonderful program called Discover Queen Anne's County. And what we do every week, we talk about uh, Queen Anne's County through the eyes and stories of people who've lived here, uh, some people a year, some people 30 or 40 years, and you get to learn a little bit about your community and the people who live in it. Now today I have one of my favorite people, Mrs. Madeline Hollis, who I've known now about 40 years, and we're going to share some of her experiences uh, with you today. Madeline, thank you very much for being with me, okay? It thank took you. me a couple times to get you here, but it's not bad, all right? And Madeline, uh, here's what we'll do. Now that we've made Charlie Nesbitt a star, okay, now that we've got all these old characters having fun, tell me, uh, when did you first come to Queen Anne? When does it begin for you in Queen Anne's County? I came to Queen Anne's County September 1951. Okay, 1951. Now, that's mm -hmm. the year my wife was born, so that's got to be about 62 years, am I correct? That place? is correct. 62 years that ago. That's correct. Where did you come from and why? I came from Accomack County, Virginia. Okay. I'm a Virginian. Now that's the birth. eastern shore. Is that the eastern, eastern shore, shore of Virginia? That is the okay. eastern shore. You know, um, Virginia has two counties. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't mean it has two counties on the eastern shore. Right. And Marylanders <laughs> still say they should be part of Maryland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Accomack County, which joins to Maryland, okay. and Northampton County. Okay. But I'm from Accomack County. Okay, now what were mom and dad doing down there? We or? were farmers. Okay. We right. were tenant farmers. Okay. And I am a country girl. I right. grew up on the farm, and I know how to live farm life. You're a farm life, um, okay. I know how to live farm life. And I finished high school. Let me, let me slow you down. Brothers and sisters you grew oh, up with? Yes. Oh, yes. Tell me, give me the family, yeah. The family. Well, I had had, well, it was, eight children. Eight in the family. Five girls and okay. three boys. Oh, great. And the okay. mom and the, and the dad. Okay. And uh, so we know what country life is all, sure. all okay. about. So, and, then, and then everyone chipped in and everyone helped on the farm? Well, or? at that day and time, that's what you did. It was, you you, sl you yeah. chipped in. You okay. wasn't saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I let somebody okay. else do it. You had a chore to do, and you did it. Okay. One of the things that my parents kept in mind was this, because in their educational background, they had completed elementary school, okay. but they made up their minds that whichever farm they lived on, it would be in proximity to a church and a school. So this religion and education and were Religion important. and education were their thing. Okay. And the interesting thing about it, even though they were elementary educated, they could read and write okay. better right now than some of the kids I come in contact with. And that now. means because mom and dad valued good. that yes. you were expected to be in church on right. Sundays. and I, Always. And, uh, okay. Always. You didn't ask. You're going to church going. on Sunday. You just automatically got up and you know you were going okay. to church. Now what was school? Tell me about your school experience. Well, my, my school experience was far different than the experiences now. When I was going to school, an elementary school went from grade one through seven one and then seven. in the high school where i attended okay. it was grades eight through eleven see at that time Accomack oh, yeah, okay. county remember reminded me so much of queen anne's county it only had one black high school and to remind the audience because some people when charlie mr nesbitt told this story i had people say to me what do you mean the schools were segregated? I'm assuming you went to uh, oh, share that with us. Yeah. Everything was segregated. Okay. Everything. African Americans went to school with African Americans, right. and there was no. That is right. No mixing. Okay. Uh, All right. Not in, in the okay. school system. Right. And uh, I can remember, I don't know exactly now how many high schools they had, but it was several because in just about every little town or community, there was a white uh, a high school. Okay. Because I remember when I was going to high school, the white school bus used to drive right by our lane. And didn't pick in. And didn't pick us up. And that high school was close to us. Mm. And we had to walk. My brother and I walked at least three miles to get to the bus stop. Just to get to the bus Just stop? Just to get to the bus stop. Was there one African-American school in the whole county? In or? the whole county. Yeah. Much, much like Queen Anne's. Queen yeah, Anne's yeah, had Canary. One. What was the name of the school? The name of the school was Mary Nottingham High School. Mm -hmm. And Mary Nottingham High School was a real person. Tell she, me about, I don't know, who's Mary? Mary Nottingham Smith was a black lady who was okay. a supervisor okay. of the, the 
black schools in Accomack County. Okay. She's now uh -huh. deceased. I knew her well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was alive at that point? She was alive. She was alive. At, she was alive and the at, school was still named after her? Right. Okay. Now tell me, do you remember any teachers you remember? Or? Oh, I had a French teacher. Her name is, is well, I forgot her name, yeah. but uh, there was a uh, history teacher, Mrs. Thorpe. The best one who eventually came to be the principal was named Mr. Vernon Orton. Darn. He was very good. Okay. I had a French teacher. Some of those teachers' names I can't okay. remember. That's okay. You remember what they taught. Yeah, they taught sure. French. And there was one when I was a little girl. Uh, he was from Salisbury. Uh, he was a Renaissance teacher, dressed very well. Okay. And Sounds like you might have had a crush on I him. I had a crush on him. Now I can't think of his name. That's okay. okay. <laughs> oh, I but it was a good experience. It was a good experience. And mom and dad were reinforcing the fact you're in church on Sundays, you're going to do well in schools, the rest right. of Right. And you did, your, you did your lessons, too. Okay. Madeline, how about uh, when I had your friend and my friend, uh, Coach Nesbitt, on, mm -hmm. he said that when he was in school, uh, sports was a big part of his life. With you acting, or was was it different for young women at I, that point? Or? I did not play sports. Okay. And we did not have that many sports in our high school. Okay. Because at the time, who were you going to play? Okay. Uh, intramurals, but not varsity. Okay. Because there's only one school. And another interesting thing about the school: the school did not have at that time a, just a certain amount of plumbing. You might okay. have it in a, a Catholic. Well, we didn't even have a cafeteria in the beginning. Okay. You ate in the classroom? We, no, we didn't oh, eat. No. Have, that was a large building that was near the school. Okay. And uh, that was the cafeteria. Mm. And at that time, cafeteria uh, meant that you had a lunch of a five-cent lunch. That's all five cents a lunch. That five-cent lunch could be a bowl of soup. Two slices of bread and a dessert. Cooked by the moms two, or no, staff? No, these were two ladies that the school okay. system had hired. Okay. And then if you didn't want to eat that, you could take five cents and buy a little thimble of peanuts, an apple, and three cookies. All for five cents? All for five cents. And that was it. Five cents was a bit of money yeah. then, right? And this was in 1940. One, okay, 42. so the early 40s, right? uh, the early country 40s. still in the Depression. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. what was the eastern, tell me about the climate of the eastern shore of Virginia. The eastern shore is agrarian, uh, uh, East Accomack County. county. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, right now it's much different. If you okay. go down there, it's much different. But it was mostly farmland and factories. Okay. And some of the factories would be a uh, tomato factory. Uh, Stuff that was grown locally. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. One factory in New Church, Virginia, you used to do tomatoes, string beans, white potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Okay. And I had worked in those factories. Okay, so whatever was grown, was there canned? Yes, Is that what it canned? was canned. Okay. And the other one was the oyster house. They used to shuck oysters down okay. there. And I know how to shuck oysters. Okay. I learned how to shuck oysters. Because when now I, I know where to bring my oysters one day <laughs> if I need them. Not that I love doing it, but okay. I know how to do it. That was hard it. work, your hands. And what was it like for, well, let me ask you, what, what was it like for a young African-American woman in Eastern Shore, Virginia? Good times, bad times, not aware of the rest of the world, or what? Bad times. Bad, okay. The way I was looking yeah, at it personally, right. it was sure. bad times. Okay. And that, why, that was the reason why a lot of them, once they finished high school, a lot of them moved okay. to, away. Just to, to get away to, from just that Just to climate. get away from okay. that climate. Because there was no opportunities for you. Okay. And I, when I go back now and look at it, it's the biggest difference. You can go and see African Americans in the banks, and some other stores, and the okay. telephone offices, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you you went to segregated schools. Had what was the? Why did you want to get into education? Go to college? What was the mom and dad pushing, or what? Was I it? always had a thirst for learning. Okay. And uh, between the time I was uh, born in Virginia. The parents moved over on the Maryland side for a while. Your parents? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And I remember one day going to school and the weather was bad because my parents never believed in keeping the kids home when the weather was sure. bad. Go to school? And many times we went to school, the, the, my former name was Matthews. Mm -hmm. The Matthews kids would be the only one Because <laughs> you had to walk three, no, that was just to no, get to the bus. That, that, no, that's for oh. high school, oh, high but school. this was an okay. elementary school when we okay. would be the only ones there. Okay. And I remember, recall one day, I, we started out in the first, in, in the system where I first started out in Maryland. I 
started out, you start out in what they call the primer. That was a class. Okay. And you go that half of a year, and then the other half of a year, you were first grade. Mm -hmm. You finish that. The next year, you would go into the second, second grade. grade. But I started out primer, and because I had been around my brothers and sisters and had picked up a lot from them, you I could ahead. read very well, okay. very well. So this particular day, there was Madeline was the only one in the primer class present, and uh, there were two or three kids present in the second grade. Mm -hmm. So uh, the teacher put me in with them. Okay. And I really advanced. I really skipped the sure, grade. Yeah. On and the spot I, promotion uh -huh. there, right? Okay. Yes, and I, so I said, always say I started out in second grade. Really. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So mm -hmm. you, you go through the uh, elementary stage in the high school. Was there a teacher that made you want to be a teacher, or what was the? Uh, uh, in high school, it was, a, as I told you, I mentioned his name previously. Yeah. His name was Mr. Orton, and okay. he, he taught mathematics. Right. And he was a person that he used to tell us about his life. And he was from this, a similar background as what we were okay. had been exposed to. And I just adored that gentleman. And what he said, he taught me all the math I ever okay. knew. Okay. So he, is, he, is, he was your inspiration? He is my inspiration, okay. Mr. Vernon Orton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about you leave high, what's the next step? You leave high school, where did well, you go to I, school? I, when I graduated from high school, being from a poor family, I did not have enough money to go on to college. Okay. So I worked a year. Okay. And in that year, that's when I learned how to do oysters, to, to save so money. So you were working to save money I to go to college? I was working to okay. save money. And then I had a cousin who lived up in Delaware who had plans to go to Delaware State. Okay. Where she, Dell State is right now? Dover. Dover. Okay. And she encouraged me, why don't you go to Dell State? Okay. So I started Dell State in 1944. So 44, okay. Uh -huh. 19, I graduated from high school in 1943. Okay. And at that time, when I graduated from high school, uh, I'll never forget it. Commencement was held on the 13th oh, no, we June. of May. Oh, May, okay. May. May. And school closed on the 14th of May. <laughs> hey, what would you and write the out? reason why, you you know, being an agrarian county, those farmers ruled everything. So you had to go to work. Someone yeah, had to because do the even, this is something I hadn't told you. Even when we were going to school, there was a time that the farmers went to the Board of Education and they had us going to school on Saturdays. You kidding me? So no, you could get, and that's so you could get to so the you fields? Get, and get to the fields and also so the school we got out early as it did. Okay. Yeah. Now what, let me ask you man, what in the world was Dover like in 1944? Dover was blah. <laughs> <laughs> if they had not had the airport there, Dover was blah. The Air, the Air Force was there in 44? Uh-huh. Okay. Downtown, you had a few stores. Okay. Uh, I, I ride through Dover sometimes now. Oh, Lord, no. is this the same place okay. where I, I lived for four years? Now, let me ask you, man. Uh, coming from rural Virginia, mm -hmm. Eastern Shore, Dover, Delaware, north of the Mason Dixon line, any change in attitude towards African Americans or not? Well, when I, to my, what I can remember when I got on the train in uh, a little town called Oak Hall, Virginia, okay. and went to Dover, They'd do the same thing. They, the, the whites would go this way. The conductor would send the whites this way, and okay. they send the African American back in this. Coach. Okay, so it was still that kind would, of the mm -hmm. same. It was still. My mom uh, always tells the story. She's 88, Madeline, and she lived in Boston. Well, Boston had the Italians, the Irish, and mm -hmm. the African Americans. She got off a bus in Washington D.C. about the same time, and for the first time ever, she saw white and colored in the restrooms. Mm -hmm. She said she said she was in a foreign country. So no difference between right. Eastern Shore and Dover. That's right. Okay. It was there. It okay. was there. And was it Dell State and then? Oh, it was Delaware State College. Okay. What was that like in '44? Oh, small. It, it was small. Okay. But one thing we had, we had a lot of uh, guys who had been in the military who had been discharged, okay. and they had not been able to go to college before right. because of finances. Right, right. And it seemed the government had... Um, the GI Bill. GI Bill. Bill. Revolutionized everything, right? And what they did, they moved on the campus a lot of 
I would call them, I don't know what, you've been in service, what, sure. do, you, what do you call the buildings that the guys lived in? Well, we used to have dormitories They're, and uh, the Quonset huts? Well, no? it wouldn't be the Quonset huts, but they were small buildings okay. and they used them as, as the dormitory for the Oh, for guys. the, for the, for the mm -hmm. okay. Now, what was, uh, and you, you, you knew you wanted to get right into education? I mean, is it a four-year well, program? Or? What had happened, uh, I always thought I wanted to be a cadet nurse. Okay. My brother, my oldest brother, was in uh, the army, and now I help me out. Forty-four, the wars. The wars going on. It's the wars, so we're fighting I'm a war. And you're going to come. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. thinking nurse, military. Yes. Yeah. And when I got to Delaware State, we had a meeting with a lady who was a nurse in the military, and she came to a group of us and spoke to us. You know finding out what your your future would be like. Sure. And I said, I want to be a cadet nurse. Right. And um, she told us the rules and regulation. And uh, you needed chemistry, really. Okay. So I majored in chemistry well, because I major. thought that I was going to be a nurse, nurse or a doctor or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I, but I did not. And my brother, he was totally against it. He was basing his opinion on what he had seen while he in the military, military how oh, young okay. women were used, oh, okay. and so he was bitterly against it. Yeah, so older brother, younger he's brother. He's the oldest. So he didn't want little sister he getting with the GI. He didn't want little sister going to things like that. <laughs> so I changed my whole outlook on okay. life, okay. and I said, I think I like this. I like, when I got into chemistry, because we didn't have chemistry in high school, All right. we had biology, but not chemistry. No chemistry. And I just loved it so well. I said, I'm going this way. So I majored in chemistry and minor in mathematics. Okay, so you think in that point you're yeah. thinking chemistry, math, math teacher okay. type right. thing. Okay, how were the four four years at, at four years? At was Delaware it Delaware State teacher? It was Del no, it was no. Del they just call it Delaware State College. Oh, Delaware State College. Good mm -hmm. experience. For wonderful. Four years? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now we we were missing a lot of things that we should have had because of the okay. poor, you know. The war and the, everything, okay. you know, there were a lot of things. Okay. Because at the time, when I went, Dell State had a program on there for high school students for the state of Delaware. Because at the time, the state of Delaware only had two high schools. And one was a Howard High in Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, you, and then uh, the Dell State okay. High School. For African Americans. Uh, for oh, high, okay. oh, okay. high African Americans. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So you went so, to, if you're going to college, you're going to Dell State. Right. Yes, if, in, if you're from that area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, what did you do? Sororities or clubs? Or? Well, I was invited to join the one, the AKAs, but when I saw the way some of those girls were treated and what they had to do, uh, -uh. You mean the initiation the process? The initiation okay. process. Okay. Mm -mm, that was not for me because I still have a little bit of. I had a temperament. <laughs> <laughs> and I you still do that. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Good for you. I Good couldn't handle you. it. So that's the way I. Uh, yeah, but you do. Uh, aren't I, you and Willie Pauls in a sorority? Right. She is. I'm not. You're not. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not. Okay. I don't mess with that. So four years at Dell State, mm -hmm. and what happens upon graduation? When I, while I was at Dell State, I had heard about the good paying salary that Marilyn had. Okay. Because I was going back home to Virginia, trying to get into high school. That failed because we only had the one high school and no okay. teachers were leaving. You relieved. just weren't any jobs. No job. I mean, that, so now they, this is about what forty eight. This is forty eight. Forty eight. The war's over. All mm -hmm. the GIs are back. Yeah. Yada yada yada. Okay. So forty eight. I was back in Virginia, and the supervisor, the Mary Nan Hand Smith. Right. I'm trying to remember what I contacted her first, or she contacted me. But anyhow, they needed a teacher, and uh, I went to see her, and we sort of an interview type sure. meeting. And she gave me the job okay. in a little community called Metomic in Virginia. Metomic, okay. And in there, they had this one elementary school, and there had been one teacher there, but she had gone back to her home in, okay. across the bridge in Virginia. And they gave me the job. At, and this, at the elementary level? At the elementary, elementary level. level. Well, I, see, I had done all secondary mm -hmm. high school work. Okay. What am I going to do? But the, the supervisor, and they had what they call a visiting teacher, they would come around ever so often to support me, to give me ideas and things. Okay. How I hope you be a better yeah. teacher. Okay. So I had, I had 40, I'm sorry, not 40, 54 students. 
one teacher, one 54 teacher, students. and they range from grades one through seven. Hmm. And and this is one big building. Out uh, toilets were on the outside. It did not have electricity. So I said, I think I got to do a little better than okay. this. Right. So what I decided to do with the help of some parents and the kids, we would sell uh, hot dog sandwiches certain okay. Fridays. Another thing just we fun, did, fun 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 that's my fundraiser. Okay. Another thing we decided to do, that we would have a movie on certain Fridays. Okay. So there was a young man in the seventh grade class who knew how to operate one a of projector? the projectors. All right. And there was a, uh, I call it a cap, uh, what do you call these people where people hang out now, club type club, thing. Yeah, okay. His name was Daddy O'Kenzie. <laughs> Daddy O'Kenzie. Dad I like the name already. Now, I though. talked with him and he decided to let me borrow this without any charge. The projector. The projector okay. with a movie with it. So I think, uh, I told this to someone else, they said, how much money did you raise? I said, I really don't know now. But we raised, over a period of time, we raised enough money to put electricity in that building. Hmm. And also, at the time, I did a, I used to play a piano a little bit, okay. and we put a piano in there. And that so was that a was big the board, ever who was running the county weren't going to give the you the board money. You just raised it on your own. Yeah. Hot dogs and with daddy yeah. uh, helping you out. <laughs> Yeah. Is Daddy-O alive and well, or have we no, lost him Dad, tragically? No, we've lost Daddy-O. Okay. So you raised your own money, you put mm. electricity, and you upgraded uh -huh. the whole school. And this is a young school, what are you, 23, 22, well, 24? At that time, yeah. I think I was 21. Yeah. So you had the gumption mm -hmm. to say, oh, this is going to be better yeah. for the kids. That's why I look at the 21-year-old as now, and I think when I was 21 years old, I think I was a little more mature. I'm so. with Daddy-O <laughs> raising money for my children. Yeah, okay. this. But we still had those outdoor toilets. Okay. Yeah, we still had them. So um, I think putting electricity it wasn't too costly because it was just one big building. Okay. We had a little compartment, which, which was uh, the cloak room. You know, you yeah, have to sure. have your little cloak room. Sure. And we had a pump in there and a sink. And that's the that's only water? The only way. And guess what? The, the stove that I used was a pot. Uh, Hell, an old Ben Franklin it, pot. It was a coal stove. And you know what would happen? They had a term that you you banked it at in the afternoon, right, school yeah, the closed down. Right, yeah. In the morning, you come back and shake the shake clinkers it out. Right, right. But if you didn't do it correctly, the fire, the fire would be out in the morning. And you'd be freezing. And sometimes it's so cold. Mm. And when I look at the people now and the teachers now. What they fuss about. Right? How, what they fuss about. Right it's, it's pathetic. It's unbelievable. And, and the salary scale. Yeah, what did you start out with? See, I told you when I was in college, I had written all these letters to try to get a job in Maryland, which I couldn't. Right. Only two people even recognized my letters. But at this particular time, I, when I took that, I started out receiving $1,595 a the year. year. $1,500 a year. Yet, let me tell you what the $95 <laughs> was for. I'm afraid to ask. It was for the purpose of, be, because I was a principal, so to speak. Okay. See, I was you a ran teacher. the building. You ran yeah, the building. Yeah, a teacher sure. principal. Yeah. And when I took my, when I received my, my paycheck, we got paid once a month, okay. I took home, I'll never forget it, $133 And you probably thought month. you were rich. Rich. Rich is income. Rich. And after I had taught in that situation for three years, I received a, a letter from, um, Queen Anne's County said there was a possible opening if I was interested. Oh, so you only at the school for a year? Uh, three years. Oh, I'm sorry. Three, three years. You've raised money. You put electricity mm -hmm. in. You've updated yeah. everything. And, <laughs> and enough yeah. is enough. It's yes, enough. Okay. And I, when I see, received that letter, it was during December after my third year of teaching down there. And okay. I was living and working in her lot. There was a cannery. It was a Acme Cannery. Okay. And they used to hire these migrant workers. But the United Methodist Church, the conference, had a program where they would hire workers, like teachers, right, right. to work with these kids who were migrants, okay. who were poor. Just like from, our migrant program yeah, we had Yeah, they were pulled from like, their homes okay. and blah, 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 that idea. type of thing. Right. So there were three of us. One girl work, worked as the cook, the one worked with the smaller kids, and I had the upper grade kids. Okay. So that's where I received my letter. My mom sent it to me, because it had gone to my home. Sure. And, uh, I came up to Centerville and was interviewed by now, What Mr. are we about, 50, help me year-wise, 51 at that uh, point? 
Yeah. About 1951. Yeah, well, uh -huh. What you said it earlier. was 51. Okay. And I came up, was interviewed by Mr. Larry Jones and Mr. Carter Hickman. Okay, now uh, let me go. Larry Jones was the principal of Kennard. Uh, Kennard. Carter Hickman became well, delegate. He was a supervisor. And then. later delegate uh -huh. Carter Hickman. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. So they interviewed you in 51. Yeah. And so I signed on the dotted line and I accepted the job. And then let me ask you, <laughs> you made $1,500 in 95 in Virginia. In 1951, what was the salary then? Well, Queen Anne's County offered me 2500 Oh, this is a big pay raise I, I, I'm here. telling you, I was rich. <laughs> I was rich. Oh, okay. And that was why I took the job. It, it paid much better than Virginia okay, so at the, that time. The pay, mm -hmm. But isn't it amazing? Uh, 1948, $1,500. And you uh, thought you were doing quite well, uh, right? Yes. I, I had more money at that time than some of these kids who are teaching now that what what $40,000 a year. I don't know okay. what to do with it. You know. Now, Madeline, what's going to happen? This part of the show is going to stop, okay? okay? What I'm going to do in about a month, okay, I'm going to ask you to come back, okay, and we'll continue, all right, because uh, from 1951. We'll do this in two parts, if that's all right with you, oh, okay? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're doing great, okay? And so, and what we'll do is then we'll go from 51, okay, up to the, your whole time here, all right? But just to, to summarize, which is amazing, okay, first member of the family is your, you and your sibling, but other siblings, college or university? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So all mom and dad did a heck of a good job. did not go, but okay. let me see, how many of the eight? I think four of us attended college. Of the four, three graduated. Uh, and teachers or what? what uh, one was a teacher who finally went into social work, and my oldest sister was a teacher. My younger sister was a teacher, okay. and um, the one who dro dropped out, she didn't teach. Okay. My brothers didn't go. They didn't want to go. And um, my sister in Virginia, who's living now, she started, and then she didn't finish. She got married. Mom and Dad did a heck of a good job, didn't they? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, maybe I maybe. think that there is. Right. Well, Madeline, Could what we're going to do now, can I get you to come back in about a month? Yes. Okay, and we'll do the second able. part. Then this is part one is just we'll take you up to 51, all right? And it's uh -huh. an amazing story. Because I think, as I talked with Coach Nesbitt, people under 40 years old very often say, what do you mean schools were segregated? What do you mean we didn't compete against each other in sports. So what you and Mr. Nesbitt and other people are sharing with the community is real important. Yeah. And then when we do the next part of the show, we talk about what Queen Anne's County was like in 1951. It's a little different than yeah, now, it's a okay? Different. You've done great, okay? Now let me sign off here. Okay. I'm Fred McNeil. I've been with Mrs. Madeline Hollis, and we've gone uh, to the 40s up to the early 50s on what it was like to be a young teacher. Uh, my, I'd like to thank you very much for watching us. We'll do part two with Mrs. Hollis later, but thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.